I sure hate to see these collards go, but it's time for a change. We have officially got our money's worth out of these three rows of collards right here. Now you'll see we are missing a few plants here and there because some of them did bolt on us, but for the most part, we still got the majority of what we planted and there's been quite a few harvests that have happened along that old tall stalk there. Some of these stalks are three, four foot tall, hiney high on me. And uh, they've been good to me, but it's time for a change. So I'm going to pick them one last time and we're going to do something different in this plot. Whew, some of them boogers was tough to get out of the ground. They've been in there a long, long time. We planted them collards way back in October and here it is middle to the end of May. So we did get about five more bags of harvest there off them collards before we pulled them up. And don't worry, I got more. I got more collards planted in a different spot. They're just coming along. And there's what's left of them right there. A collard graveyard and we'll let the youngins carry those off to the burn pile later. And now, what to do with this plot here? What are we gonna plant right here? We've got all the other plots in the dream garden planted. We've got corn, okra, squash, beans, and peppers right here. And we spin all the way around back to where we started. We're gonna plant another crop of sweet corn, a succession planting of sweet corn. That corn there is coming along pretty good. That's our Avalon triple sweet. Now we're gonna come in right here and plant some temptress quad sweet corn. But this plot needs some amending before we do that. And that's why we got that truckload of compost right there. So we're gonna get this drip tape out of here, put a heavy dose of that compost down, get it incorporated in the soil, and we'll be ready to plant some sweet corn. All right, all right, all right. Halfway there, got our compost down, got it somewhat incorporated. One of these days, I'm gonna quit trying to be such a tough guy and I'm gonna get me a little tractor to spread that compost instead of doing it by hand, but just gotta get you exercise sometimes out here in the garden and uh, that's certainly a good way to do it. Now my plan was to plant some corn today, but this ground behind me is hard and dry. So I think I'm gonna be pushed back a few days. Let me tell you what we're gonna to do to try to fix that problem. Now you might not can tell by looking at it here, but that's some dry, hard dirt right there. Some of them spots, or a lot of them spots, my old tiller was just kind of skipping through there. And I know I ain't gonna be able to get my plow blades on my wheel hoe very deep to uh, bury that drip tape. So what we're gonna to have to do is water this in a little bit and then maybe till it one time before we can plant or before we can lay our drip tape then plant. So I'm gonna go grab my tripod sprinkler and I'm gonna put it on this plot here and I'm gonna water it in good, probably three or four hours. Soak it in good, get some water down there deep so we can, you know, work this soil and plant in it. It's been a while since we've had some rain around here. So we're gonna soak it in good. I'm gonna go ahead and go in the office, get a little work done and I'll be back with you guys in a day or two and we'll get this corn planted. All right, a little wardrobe change and a couple days later, we're back out here at our plot where we're going to plant a second crop of sweet corn, this temptress quad sweet corn. Now, as I was telling you before I left you a couple days ago, this soil was really hard. We hadn't had any rain in quite a while. And so I had to wet it down to get that compost incorporated deeper and also get that soil work deep enough so I can get my plows in there and make a furrow and lay my drip tape. And I know some people say, well, why don't you just, you know, put that compost on top and plant right into the compost. Well, this soil here has a lot of clay and it. it doesn't drain very well, it crusts over, 
and it's not very workable once it gets really dry. So I have found that incorporating a lot of that compost and incorporating it as deep as I can with a tiller makes this soil a lot easier to garden in. So that's my solution currently. The soil was a lot softer, didn't have as much clay in it, had a lot more organic matter, then I probably wouldn't have to do that. But we're only in the second year of this dream garden here and we gotta get that compost deep just to make these plots better over time. So if we take a look at the soil here now, we can see it's a lot, lot better shape. And uh, that's gonna help us to get better germination on the corn seed and everything. It's just gonna make it easier to grow this corn in here. Now I didn't have the camera rolling for this, but uh, you can go back on any of our corn planting videos and see how this is done. I went ahead and got my drip tape down. I've got 11 rows here three feet apart which is kind of standard corn spacing so that drip takes buried there and you can see that kind of little line there where it is that's where i'll be planting right on top of my cedar here in just a minute and the great thing about having all these plots here kind of standardized the same size is that i can reuse this mainline tubing here so that saved me a bit of time i could Reuse this little stretch of tubing. I didn't even have to punch new holes because we were doing a three foot spacing on those fall slash winter crops that we had in here before. And that's what we're doing on our corn. So having everything standardized like that really saves us some time out here in the garden. Now for the rest of this video, I'm gonna kind of shoot this in a reverse sequence. It's supposed to rain here within the next 30, 45 minutes or so. And I definitely wanna get this corn in the ground before that happens, because who knows when we'll get more rain. So. I'm gonna go ahead and plant the corn with the cedar, and then we'll talk about our plate and our strategy here and succession planting corn like we're doing today. We've never done that before. All that good stuff we'll talk about right after I get through planting it. All right, all right, all right, we got it planted, which was priority number one this morning. Now we can kind of talk about what we did here. It is so muggy and humid out here. It's almost suffocating. A little asthma uh, kind of acts up this time of year. Man, these real humid mornings sometimes make it hard to breathe out here. You can tell it's gonna rain this morning. It's just muggy and sticky out here. Good old South Georgia weather, gotta love it. Anyway, let's talk about the corn variety we planted. So this is a variety we just brought on a few weeks ago called Temptress Sweet Corn. This is a bicolor sweet corn. Now on a lot of our other videos, we've talked a lot about these triple sweet varieties. We've got some white ones like the Avalon, I'll show you in a minute, the one we planted earlier this year. We've got a couple bicolor triple sweets and we've got also the yellow triple sweet, the Honey Select, which is a great variety as well. Now the triple sweets have all three corn types on one ear. So with corn, you have standard varieties, you have the SE or sugary enhanced varieties, and then you have the super sweet or the SH2 varieties. And those triple sweet uh, varieties of corn, you get all three kernel types on one ear. So, that's really good if you like some of the kind of heirloom flavor, but also like some of the sweetness. Uh, they do store a lot better than some of the heirloom varieties just because they have more sugar and uh, less starch. So the triple sweets we have really liked so far. This one here is what they call a quad sweet. So it's similar to the triple sweets in that on one ear you've got the standard, the sugary enhanced, and the super sweet kernels all on one ear but you've got more of the super sweet kernels. The ratio of super sweets to the other types of kernels on the ear is higher. So this is supposed to be even sweeter than the triple sweets, and it should store even you know, a little better than the triple sweets, which is really important for me here because uh, part of what we do here is having a small scale market garden, and you know, we only do bag deliveries or vegetable deliveries once a week. And if that corn has to be harvested, you know, on a um, Wednesday and I don't deliver 
to the next Monday or Tuesday, it's gotta be able to store in the fridge. So storage is extremely important for us here. So we're really excited about this temptress variety here and giving it a try. Let me get these seeds out of this hopper here and pour them back in the bag. And then we'll, I'll show you the seed plate and where I kind of made a little boo-boo and why you definitely don't want to get in a hurry when you're getting your seed plate ready and you're getting ready to plant. So we're just gonna take our little wing nut off here. And I'll put my thumb on this brush here and we'll just pull the whole thing out of here. And then we'll dump it. bag there and every now and then you'll have a few get stuck in the brush that means the brush is doing its job so we'll kind of flick those back into the bag and we got a few left here in the bottom of this plate dump them all in there so it's pretty easy to empty this hopper once you're done planting if you have a few extra seeds left over now I'm going to use the bottom of this bucket here to kind of show you what I'm talking about with the seed plate calibration. This, so this is a standard number four plate here. This is the plate we use for that Avalon triple sweet corn and it worked perfectly for it. Now, cause I was in a little hurry this morning and when you get in a hurry, sometimes you mess up. This corn here is smaller than that Avalon. The sweeter the corn is, the more shrunken the kernels are gonna be and the smaller the kernels are gonna be. So the, because this has more of your super sweet kernels in it it's going to be a lot smaller so if you see these fit in the hole really easily but they almost fit in the hole too well you can see here we could even squeeze two in there and so what happened when i was planting it because i got in a hurry is that it jammed a few times on me which is not a big deal if it just does it you know once every couple rows or so but that told me hey you didn't really take your time and make sure your seed plate was just right so in hindsight what i should have done is took me a blank plate marked where these holes were and drilled those holes a little smaller so i don't have so much extra room right here so that i can get some doubling up and some jamming just like you see right there now thankfully I didn't have to stop and adjust that seed plate while I was planting. It was good enough to, to get by this morning. And next time I plant that variety, I'll do a lot better job calibrating my plate. But I could tell by the amount of corn I was putting out you know, for me doing this before with my 30 by 35 plots, you know, 11, 30 foot rows or so. If I empty out a hopper full and maybe a little more, that tells me I'm putting down enough corn seed. So I could tell I was at least doing that but you know in the future i want to calibrate that plate better so i get um, better singulation with my cedar here now if it does jam on you let me get some of this caked on dirt off here if it does jam on you while you are seeding with this thing the last thing you want to do if it's jammed is to keep trying to push it don't try to like push through that jam because what you'll do is you'll damage those gears that are underneath the hopper here. So if it does jam, stop, pick up on the cedar here on the back of it and just spin that wheel backwards with your foot. It's kind of like this right here. Just pick up on it. And you don't have to spin it much, just spin it one time and you'll hear that kind of rogue seed or those two jam seeds in there. It'll kind of discharge them and throw them out. So don't ever push it while it's jammed spin that wheel backwards and then you'll be good to go and then lastly i want to talk about succession planting sweet corn which i've never done before now we always usually plant a spring crop you know early spring mid-march or so like this corn behind me and then i'll plant a fall crop in you know late august early september we do that every year but i've never planted a second spring crop of sweet corn now I've heard of a lot of other market farmers and a lot of our customers doing it. So I figured I'd give it a try this year. You know, corn is not one of those things that kind of hamstrings my crop rotation. We only grow, you know, two plots of corn per year. I've got 10 plots here. So it's not like some things like squash and cucumbers. I have to be real careful with my rotation because I got plenty of plots and I'm not using a whole lot of them on corn 
every year. And I've even heard of some people who will really, really stack their corn plants in there. They'll plant a new plot of corn every month or so, and they'll just have corn getting ready all throughout the warmer months. I don't think we're gonna do that this year, but we may, you know, if this works well, we may do that in the future. If you are staggering those plantings like that, you probably wanna at least separate them by, I'd say three to four weeks or so, anywhere from maybe, well, two to four weeks. That way you don't have to worry about any cross-pollination if you are planting different varieties every time you succession plant. Now this corn here, we planted back in mid-March, and here it is now mid-May, so we don't have nothing to worry about here. And just to talk about this a little bit, so this is our Avalon Triple Sweet. And in some spots, it's not quite as green as I'd like it to be. But I will tell you, this corn looks 10 times better than the corn I grew in this dream garden area last year. So I can tell my soil's getting better. It's not quite all the way there, but it's getting there. I also can tell where I dumped that load of compost. Now I tried to spread it out as evenly as I could, but you can tell where I unloaded that right back here where this corn looks perfect. This is exactly how I want it to look. Big old leaves on it, nice dark green, all that good stuff. Now if we go over here to this end, where I was kind of throwing it to the corner with the shovel, we can see this over here is a lot shorter and not quite as green. Now you'll see I got a little happy with my nitrogen there, burned the leaves a little bit, but that ain't gonna hurt anything. Anyway, so we've got a little bit of variability within this plot here. And what that tells me is I need to keep composting heavily. So as soon as this corn's done, before I plant anything here, whether it be a cover crop or anything, I'm gonna have to dump another ton of compost on it and just keep working with it until it gets better. Now this plot over here that we just planted, I put more compost on it than I did this plot. Kind of learned my lesson there. So I put about a ton and a half two tons over here to get it real nice and thick and hopefully that helps needless to say we're, we're still going to have probably a good corn crop here happy with everything it's not tasseling out yet if your corn tassels when it's short that's usually not a good sign so we're still growing nice healthy plants got some nice looking stalks down there and so we're just looking forward to trying this white triple sweet corn so for all you corn growers out there, let me know how your corn is doing so far. I know some of our friends that live way down in the deep south in South Louisiana, South Mississippi, even South Texas are already harvesting sweet corn. We're about a month away here, so still a little ways to go. Also, if any of you guys out there do this succession corn planting, I'd love to hear more about it. Do you plant the same variety each time? How far apart do you stagger the plantings? Please share your experiences in the comments below so we can all learn from one another. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. I'll put some links below to our garden cedar and that temptress sweet corn variety so you can check that out. And check out these other two videos right here. Other videos we've did in the past on planting sweet corn and even harvesting sweet corn. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.